Lots of you pointed out the similarities between my experiment with an upside down flu and a rocket stove, and you were all right. I hadn't seen any rocket stoves with grates in them before, so I hadn't made the connection, but they do exist. So I reimagined my design as a rocket stove. The fuel is fed in here and the air is drawn in past it because it wants to go up the chimney. And that feeds the fire, which should happen here. This is the door. It gives access to the ashes and also allows air in below the fuel for a secondary burn if there are any unburned gases. As far as I know, rocket stoves work really well as long as the chimney is hot enough to draw the air through and the fuel is small enough not to get stuck, which is fine by me on both counts. But I'm still on my quest to produce steam for an engine. So mine has to contain a water boiler as well. My boiler from last week should work with the built-in float valve. I just need to get it into the heat somewhere. So I elongated the base so I could position the boiler in the horizontal part of the flue, which would work perhaps, but wouldn't allow for much area for heat transfer. So I deepen the body as well. And I added some baffles to try to persuade the flames to swirl around the boiler before heading up the chimney. The air will have to go around the boiler on both sides. And I don't really know how much gap to leave, so I just had to guess. And then I tidied up the design a lot to save on materials and drew up all the shapes on the computer and cut them out on my marvellous plasma cutter. This is four millimeter steel and it's a joy to cut. The problem is I won't know whether any of this will work until I try it out. So this whole experiment is expensive in materials and time and it might just not work at all. I may have restricted the flu too much around the boiler and maybe the baffles are in the wrong place or the wrong size. The opening may be too big. I just don't know. So I'm going on whether it looks about right. I think it looks about right. <laughs> and unlike my last stove design, I don't have a suitable piece of glass. So sadly, we won't be able to see what's going on. But I think we'll be able to figure it out anyway. I cut the chimney off the first stove I made. And this time I added a flange so I can make modifications more easily in the future. And I added another straight length of copper tube up the chimney too for the next step. This all weighs quite a lot now. I was worried that the whole thing would just fall over. So I made the legs sticky outy for maximum stability. Right then, there's no water anywhere yet, but before I go any further, I want to test that the flu will actually draw the air through the fuel and around the boiler. 
Now I know the chimney won't work until it's hot, so I let the fire burn for a while first with the air just coming in from underneath it. And then close the door underneath so the airflow had to reverse. And actually it took longer than I'd expected to get the chimney hot enough to draw properly. I'm sure that could be improved with insulation. But eventually it began to work, drawing air down through the fuel around the boiler and up the chimney, which is quite exciting, I think, because I'd never made one of these before. So now to add some water to the boiler, just to see how long it will take to boil. About five minutes. In the meantime, I learned a lot using my new present from Joe. Thanks very much, Joe. These laser thermometers are great fun. And it showed me that the heat was doing much as I'd expected, not just taking the shortest route to the bottom of the chimney, but spreading upwards around the boiler. But mostly I realized a lot of the heat is being lost from the sides and the outside of the chimney. Insulation is going to be really important. So yet again, I learned a lot and it's all very interesting. I have water boiling in a horizontal flue. The next part is to connect up the pipes in the chimney so I can take the steam made in the boiler and heat it up in the chimney to make it drier. And then if that works, I want to take that heated steam and heat it up even more in a fresh boiler in the grate, which I haven't made yet. And that should make superheated steam. Ooh. But I'll have to drive all the way to Cork City to get fittings for those things to happen. So we'll have to wait till next time then, everybody. It's quite exciting though, isn't it? See you soon.